Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. Uh, if you're new and you don't know me, my name is Dustin. I'm the lead pastor here along with my wife, Beth, uh, of Known Victory Church. It's an honor to have you today. I know we have some guests with us uh, for those celebrating our baptism today, but I'm, I'm excited for today. And Christmas season, as we all know, is in full swing. Um, it's getting closer and closer to Christmas. And husbands out there, it's time to start shopping, okay? Um, West Edmonton Mall already is crazy. Don't try and go on, on Christmas Eve, okay? Uh, it's not a good idea, okay? Like, it's gonna be even make you more stressed. <laughs> it's like, after church, where are you going? I'm going to the mall. It's like, that bad idea. You got the peace in the morning. Don't go to the chaos of the mall on Christmas Eve. Uh, but Christmas is here, and what an awesome, awesome season this is. I think, you know, I've been in church my entire life, as many as, of us have. We've been in church for a long time. And I find sometimes, those of us who have been to church for a long time, a lot of these important seasons in our life are important seasons of the church. When we look at Christmas or Easter or some of the traditions we have, I think sometimes they kind of lose their value because we're around it so much. But I think it's so important for us, every time we step into this season, to remember really what it is about, that it's not about um, what we put under the tree. I know for some people, when looking at maybe even gifts for our kids, you were looking like, I don't know if I'm able to do that, or for our spouses, because money's tied. It's like, that's not even the point. The point is Jesus. Jesus is why the season matters. It's not about opening presents. It's about the greatest gift humanity ever received came that day in a manger. And we can't lose sight of that. And again, I know it's so easy to get caught up in the chaos and the events in the parties and in the, in the festivities and the gifts and all of it in the time with family. But it's so important for us every single time we step into a Christmas season, let us not lose sight of what's more important. And today, and I've never done this before, um, we get to celebrate Christmas and a baptism in the same service. Yeah, it's amazing. But I'll be honest, as I was preparing to talk, I was like, I don't know what to say because I've never done this before. Like, like this is new to me, and, I, and not new in a bad way, but new in a beautiful way. Because right? today we celebrate the birth of Jesus, this season, but again, later on today we're going to celebrate baptism, uh, people being reborn again. Celebrating uh, death falling off and life coming. That's what we get to celebrate today, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And there's so many core principles that come from baptism and Christmas that I think are so interconnected. And so my message today is from Bethlehem to Golgotha. And it's like, whoa, right? Like, so we're going to be reading the entire New Testament today. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's like, good luck, right? We're going to be here, we're gonna be here till Christmas, okay? <laughs> you might want to get on your phone and go on Amazon and order those presents. Um, and then, uh, so we're going to start today in Luke chapter 1. Uh, verse 26 to 38. We're going to kind of start before Jesus is born. And it says this, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a village in Galilee to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of, the king, of king David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Now, her response is super interesting. It says, confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. And then the angel says, don't be afraid, Mary. The angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. And then Mary, like many of us, when we get an assignment, Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin, right? The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the baby to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age, People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived the son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. 
And this is really important right here, verse 38. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me become true. And the angel left her. This is such a, this is obviously the beginning of the Christmas story. And it's so fascinating to me how it all kind of takes place, how it all happens. Again, I think we lose, sometimes we lose the value of what's actually happening in these moments. Like Mary is, is kind of awoken one day and to an angel saying, hey, you're about to give birth and you're going to conceive and you're going to have a baby and his name's going to be Jesus and he's going to be the son of God and he's going to be the savior of the world. And Mary's like, whoa, that's a big call, right? That's a big thing to be asked to do. I have two little kids of my own. That's a big enough call, let alone being like, hey, God, I'm raising your son. Like, imagine the pressure that would feel. Like, remember the day that, that Mary, they lose Jesus? Remember that? Imagine losing God's son. Like, I, like I've, I personally yet have never left my kids anywhere, and I really pray that I don't. But imagine that moment of like, oh yeah, uh, Jesus is gone, God, like what do we do, right? Like, imagine that moment, this, this, this story is so much in it, but how Mary responds to this call is so important and so key um, to this Christmas season and to when it comes to baptism is she says, I am the Lord's servant. I think in some ways that's one of the scariest things we can say and also one of the most freeing things we can say. Because what it does is it scares us in some ways of, okay, God, I'm trusting you with my entire future. I'm going to say yes, even though my, Joseph might not be too happy, even though my friends might not like this, even though this really goes against the law, even though this seems odd, even though I'm going to say yes anyways. I'm going to say yes eat, no matter what it might cost me. Mary did that. This, uh, this opportunity that God gave to her was maybe going to cost her everything. See, she wasn't married yet, and she had to have that conversation with Joseph. It's a tough conversation to have before you get married. Hey, I'm pregnant. And he's like, I can't be the father, I'm pretty sure. That's how it works. I think when God calls us, as God called Mary, we always have excuses. And you know what our excuses are? Real and, and, and uh, viable excuses. Hey, God, I'm a virgin. It's impossible for me to be pregnant. It's not possible. That's a viable excuse as to why this isn't going to work. I think in our lives, it's the same. When, when we feel the call, when something comes, we're filled with the excuses as to why we can't do it. No, I can't, I can't do that. That's not going to work for me on my timeline, on my time frame. It's not going to fit with what I want to do. But we have to learn how to have that same response saying, I am the Lord's servant. God, your will, not mine. The same prayer Jesus prays in the garden. Your will be done, not mine. It's a tough prayer to, play, to pray. But this, she says, I am willing. I am the Lord's servant. See, she has this ability in her life, number one, and we have to copy these attitudes or copy these attributes. Number one is we have to be willing. Are you willing when God calls you to do something? Are you willing to go? See, Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. I will go. I will go. But she wasn't just willing. She also was filled with faith, saying, let everything you have said about me come to pass. She was willing, but she had the faith that what the Lord spoke was going to happen. So when God calls us to something, we have to be willing to go no matter the cost and be filled with faith that what he said would happen is going to happen. See, some of us, we've been praying for our children for so long to come back to church or we, we've been praying so long for our kids and it hasn't happened yet. And some of us, we've lost hope and we've lost faith. Don't give up. Keep up the faith. Be willing and be filled with faith. We might not fully understand. We might not know why God is asking us to do it. We might not understand how it's all going to take place. Again, we have the excuse. It's not possible. I'm a virgin. It's not going to happen. But God makes miraculous things happen when people are willing and filled with faith. Willing to go where no one else will go and filled with faith that God is going to do what he said he was going to do. We might not understand it. We might not know what the outcome will be. 
but we walk with a heart that is willing and full of faith, no matter the cost. And some of us, we're waiting for the same thing to happen that happened to Mary, right? We're waiting for the angel to show up one day with the plan. We're waiting for the angel to show up and be like, hey, here's the plan for your life. But how many of you know that doesn't often happen? It does happen, but that doesn't often, that's not often the way that God speaks to us. You know how God often speaks to us? is by what he's already said. What he's already said in scripture. What he's already said. And so some of us were waiting for the call, like God, send the angel. And he's like, I already sent the Bible. I already sent my word. I already sent the truth. I already sent it to you. Open it up and see the promises and see the call I've already laid before you. And if we want to understand what the mission is or what our call is as followers of Jesus, it comes so clear in Matthew 28, which should be familiar for a lot of us. Matthew 28 verse 18 says this, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And then he says this, therefore... Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's the call. I think some of us are waiting for God to speak the actions, the steps. He's like, I already gave you the mission, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's the call. That the gospel is not just meant to stay in our homes. It's, the gospel is not just meant to stay in our hearts. The gospel wasn't just meant to stay in Bethlehem. It wasn't meant to stay in the manger. That was the birthplace of it. But it comes and it's supposed to spread to the whole world. But some of us, when it comes to sharing Jesus, when it comes to sharing what we already have, do you know what we do? We stay in the manger. We stay in the manger waiting. God sent me. He's like, I already sent you. You just got to stand up and start walking. You got to actually start going to the places that need Jesus, that need light, that need life. But we're so caught up and we stay in the manger waiting for the next angel to show up. we got to go and share Jesus with people we see. The mission to go and make disciples and baptize them. See, Jesus came to earth to save us, to restore us, to free us, to die instead of us, to take our sin and to take our punishment and take it to the grave. And that's where it's supposed to stay. The mission here, and this is Victory Churches International, is the mission here comes from this great commission is to reach the lost, teach them about Jesus, and mobilize them and send them to do the same. That when we give our lives to Jesus, part of the responsibility is not just hoard it for ourselves and hold it for ourselves, but it's to share it. Share it with our children and share it with our families and Share with our neighbors. See, baptism, when we think about baptism, it's not just something that we do out of tradition. And I think sometimes, again, we've been in church a long time, it just kind of becomes something that we do because that's just what we do. It's not just something we're supposed to do out of tradition, but it's something we do out of obedience. So yes, we we baptize out of tradition, but there's also this part of being obedient to that call and going and being baptized. We go and we be baptized. And I was baptized, I was telling people earlier, I was baptized in the Bow River in Calgary. Now one thing about the Bow River is that it's glacier-fed water. It was freezing cold. Like we, we would do baptisms in Calgary and... We'd baptize some teenagers, and they'd take one foot in the water. They're like, no chance, right? Like, I'm not going into the cold. But it's such a beautiful opportunity for us to really celebrate the new life that comes with Jesus, to celebrate the beauty of what it looks like. And I think the best definition of baptism comes from Romans 6, verse 1 to 4. And this is how it starts. Well, then, should we keep on sinning? so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. 
Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. This is baptism. We joined with Christ in baptism. We joined him in his death. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. We leave it in the past. And then we come back up in the glorious power of being raised. The beautiful moment of surrender and a public declaration of saying, God, I trust you. God, I give you my life. God, this is my moment to leave the past behind. And I know that, that when it comes to leaving the past behind, it can be tough. When Mary said, hey, I'm the Lord's servant, she, that statement is saying I'm willing to leave the past behind. I'm willing to leave it behind. I'm willing to leave Joseph behind. I'm willing to leave my life behind. Maybe my family might get disowned. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm willing to leave it behind and step forward. So we're baptized in the death, but we're raised up new creation and with life. See, baptism represents a public confession of faith and leaving the past in the past and being raised up a new creation. See, Jesus, he got baptized. If you remember the story, And this sparked the beginning of his ministry in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17 says this, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. What a thing to try and talk Jesus out of, right? I am the one who needs to be baptized by you. He said, so why are you coming to me? It's a great question. What an honor that must have been for John to baptize Jesus. And of course, John was like, no, like, no chance. Of course not. But Jesus said it should be done. For we, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. It took some convincing. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. What a powerful moment. Jesus getting baptized. And this is when we see Jesus' ministry and all the things start. And what's so fascinating about this is he's baptized. And then the next verse after this says, then he was led into the, in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. (laughs) It's like, it's such a kind of contrast of like, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased and then led into the wilderness, led into the desert to be tempted by the devil. But when the heavens opened, he said, this is my dearly loved son. Brings me great joy. And I think, when I think about baptism, I think of the same thing is that God is looking down at us with great admiration saying, you got it. This is the new life. This is what I can offer you. This is the beauty of it. This is why, this is why Jesus came to earth and to bring us new life and to bring us freedom and to bring us salvation. It's why Jesus came. See, as we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate the beginning of the saving of the world. This beautiful moment in the, in the, barn what's the word manger that's the word I'm like trying to like show you the shape you know it's like you got it (laughs) in the manger this lowly moment it's not this powerful you know like big in front of everyone moment it's in this small moment and I think new life often begins in the small moments it starts sometimes Maybe this is the prayer you prayed when you gave your life to Jesus. You're in your, you're in your house, you're in your room, and it's, you feel like you're at the end of the rope. You feel, like, you feel like there's nowhere you can go. You feel like you're broken. You feel like, you feel like you can't go one more day. And we pray the prayer, God, maybe you pray this, God, if you're real, I need you to save me. How many testimonies and stories have we heard of 
people, that's their prayer. God, I need you. I was listening to this testimony the other week. There was this lady who considered herself a witch. And, but she was broken and so broken and so hurting. And she said one day she was in her room and she prayed, God, this is that prayer. God, if you're real, I need you. And she said this peace came and her life changed in a moment. She got rid of everything and her life was drastically different. Why? Because she was willing to go on her knees and say, God, I need you. See, that's where it starts. It doesn't sometimes happen in the big coliseum. It might not happen in the big stadium. It might not happen in a massive gathering, but it can happen in such small moments. You know, when I was a kid, uh, when I gave my life to Jesus, you know, I've had a big journey, and I think all of us, our journey of faith and our journey in our relationship with Jesus has kind of has some ebbs and flows. But the first time I remember ever giving my life to Jesus we went to this big conference. I think it was at the Saddle Dome in Calgary, right? Like this big stadium. And this guy was talking about it. And my brother turns to me. I'm probably three. He's probably five or six. He goes, hey, Dustin. I'm like, yeah, he's like, heaven or hell. That's what he said to me. My six-year-old brother. And I was like, well, heaven sounds better. You know, like, like that, that was the truth. And I was like, okay, yeah, for sure. You know, that's how it was for me. But I think for me, it wasn't, I never had a big moment of, transformation for me it's been a slow journey and as I follow Jesus as I learn more about him as I learn to become more like him that's what it looks like see Jesus he began his life on earth here as a baby and as we are baptized today we're kind of restarting our journey with Jesus too giving our lives back to him when we're baptized we leave the past in the past and some of us our pasts are very troubled, right? I think there's things that some of us have gone through that people don't even know about. And the things that are so still hurting us today, still causing us pain today, and we're like, God, like, like I need you. We gotta leave it in the past. We gotta leave it at the feet of the cross and come up a new creation. Our old self dies and our new life, our new self comes up. We leave it all in the past. And one of my favorite quotes about baptism is Max Lucado. He says this, baptism is the initial step of a faithful heart. All right, baptism is the initial step of a faithful heart. You know, I'm excited today to be able to baptize. Because again, like I said, you know, as a pastor, and I've been a pastor, uh, I'm a, uh, March will be 10 years I've been in full-time ministry, which is remarkable to me. It's a miracle, to be honest. Um, my favorite thing to do is baptize people. And, you know, I've, I've baptized some of my best friends. When we were in Calgary, we had a guy who I played high school football with. We used to party together. And then I went to, uh, and then I started, you know, in ministry few years later and then he started dating like my sister's best friend they were best buds and he started coming to church a bit and we started getting him kind of serving and then I had a, the awesome opportunity one day in the Bow River to baptize my best friend and that's like one of the highlights of my whole career so far you know like my whole like ministry thing and I've done I've seen so many cool things but there's something beautiful about an intimate moment and a moment of just new life coming Baptism is such a big part of that. I'm excited um, to, to do some baptism today. But before we do, I want to just open it up and, and say this. Like maybe you're here today and, and, and you want to get baptized. Maybe you haven't been baptized before or maybe you have been baptized before. But it didn't mean what you thought it did. Or maybe you were baptized as a baby, but you want to get baptized with a better understanding and a heart of faith and a willingness and a heart filled with faith. You know, today could be that moment for you. You know, I haven't told Beth, I'm like, yo, bring some towels. I did. And so we have some extra towels. If you want to get baptized today, this could be your moment. You know, we have two people already today that are going to get baptized, which is amazing. Let's give it up for them for real quick. So good. And, uh, you know, the water, I got baptized in basically frozen water. This is literally like a bathtub. Like, it's like, it's hot, you know? Like, 
I'm a little nervous, it might be too hot. I'm joking, by the way. But yeah, you, you know, you might be sitting here today and you might be like, you know what? And maybe I want to get baptized today. I want to encourage you. This could be that moment. And it really, and what baptism, baptism is, baptism comes when we give our life to Jesus, right? It says, go and make disciples and then baptize them. If you read through scripture, that's the order. It's like, make disciples, give our lives to Jesus, and then get baptized. That's, that's the kind of the role of how we do things. And, and I think it's an amazing, amazing, amazing opportunity for us to do that.